want to get to Todd Dykes, our investigative reporter, and he's been inside the courtroom. Todd, I know you have been watching these jurors and you can get a better sense for us. Um, how are they looking when they walked in, in there? I mean, we're talking more than 20 hours of deliberating now. Do they look exhausted? Do they look like they're ready to go into a full night if need be? Kind of give us a sense of the tone of that courtroom. Yeah, good. Good question, Cherie. That's what everyone wants to know. I would say they look fatigued. I um, mean, it's not necessarily anything obvious or overt, but you can tell, at least in, from my eyes, that they understand the gravity of the situation, the weight of what is at hand. They walked in just a short time ago for this latest courtroom proceeding, um, as they have done really from day one, very few, if any, making any eye contact with Ray Tenzing. Uh, Ray Tenzing, of course, if you're facing the judge's bench, he's on the left side. you got the prosecution on the right. Uh, Mr. Tenzing uh, looking at the jurors to see if there's any way he can maybe make some eye contact and make a connection, but um, that has really not happened to any great extent. So they do look a little tired, but they focused on what Judge Shanahan had to say. You see now um, the DeBose family, maybe we'll be able to speak with Tarina Allen, Sam DeBose's sister here in just a moment as they head this way. And uh, uh, Al Gerhard Stein, a noted civil rights attorney who represented the DeBose family during their settlement talks with the University of Cincinnati, he's here as well. And if Al will come talk to us, we might be able to have a little bit better idea of what the question at hand means. He told me inside the courtroom that the word arrest is, is part of the instruction, so they may just be caught up on a point that should be fairly minor. Let's see if the, he'll talk to us. Ms. Allen, Trina? Not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Okay, Trina, let's talk to Al Gerhardt. Al, would you talk to us for a second? Noted attorney and, and knows all about courtroom happenings. What, does, what did that question say to you, Al? Well, the question went to the heart of what is reasonable force. And their instruction says, in order to determine reasonable force, you look at the seriousness of the crime, the threat to uh, the officer that may have been posed by the suspect, you look to whether the suspect was fleeing from arrest or, or resisting arrest, and you look to whether the officer contributed to the dangerousness of the situation. So those four factors are already in front of the jury. And the jury was also told that there's no fleeing felon rule. So you have to balance the reasonableness of an officer using deadly force against the need to arrest somebody or to stop them permanently. And in this case, where somebody is leaving only from a traffic stop, that balancing comes out in favor of not using deadly force, in my view. That's a so lot that's to all. Out of, um, that one question. Yeah, well, that, that, that one that question was. was going through their mind? Well, those are all the factors that go to that same point. They, they, that one question doesn't determine the ultimate answer here. All four factors together. So, does. Why now, what is it? Yeah. Judge answer that? Because it's all what I just told you is already in the instruction right, too. Right. That's what I thought. So yeah. the judge never repeats one part of an instruction. Now, what does it say to you that that was? Always sends you back to the entire instruction. How significant is this? Do you think? Yeah. The question they had in terms of where the jury is yeah. right now after no. 22 hours. I don't know. I think it's still. I think they're still weighing all the factors, and uh, in my view, they're not looking at the most important one if that's what's hanging them up. And what is what is what do you think that is? I mean, just murder the the intentional taking No, the most important one is that there was no threat to the officer. He could have just stepped back and the officer contributed to the dangerousness of the situation and it wasn't a serious crime. So those things should weigh in favor of a reasonable officer would not have used deadly force. Well, something apparently is sticking with them. I mean, they if it were that simple, we wouldn't be here right now. Um, so, I mean, what we don't know is what is hanging them up. I know that one of the experts said just the opposite, that, that Sam DeBose created a dangerous situation by not doing what Tenzing told him to do. I guess there's really no way of knowing Sam what DeBose they... was not trained. Sam DeBose is just a civilian, and the officer is trained. And one of the things he was trained is never to reach into a car. So... Um, I, I'm not, I don't know what's holding up the jury. All I can tell you is that the four factors they were instructed to weigh um, pretty much, you know, I mean, the video pretty much makes it clear that they shouldn't have used deadly force. You know, real quick, you just talked to the DeBose family, what they have to say, what would you tell I'm them? I'm really frustrated. I mean, this is very, very upsetting. And uh, the longer it drags out, the harder it is to bear. And uh, 
they want to honor, you know, Sam. They want to make sure this goes well. And the longer it drags out, that's just hard to do. And I think outside, I understand there's some frustration going on outside that, uh, that that's reflected out there as well. But still, there's this hope that that Cincinnati can um, keep the peace and keep the patients until we get a real answer. Well, concert. it's it's good that the jury's still working. So okay. thank, thank you. you. Okay. Here you go. Uh, so Al Gerhard Stein, again, a noted civil rights attorney who represented the DuBose family when they reached a settlement, a $4.8 million settlement, by the way, with the University of Cincinnati, just sharing his thoughts about that jury question, calling it, you know, one of those points that the jury should not really be hung up on. But again, who knows what's happening inside that jury room right now? Deliberations have been going on 20 plus hours at this point. It has to be exhausting. I know uh, Sheree and Mike and Sheree, you were talking about uh, how they looked when they walked into the courtroom this uh, evening, and it is now into the evening hours. They're going to still be here. Whether or not they'll be sequestered tonight is unclear, but boy, I tell you, it has got to have been a grind. As, as, as our colleagues have noted, Bill Hager, our managing editor who's nearby and down here really throughout the trial, pointed out when they're in that jury room, all they're talking about is what's at stake at this trial. They're not talking about their kid's soccer game. They're not talking about what they had for dinner last night. So they have spent more than 20 hours talking about this single issue, this deadly traffic stop uh, where Ray Tenzing did shoot and kill Sam DeBose. That we know for sure. The question is, was it intentional? Would it rise to the level of murder as prosecutors have filed that charge? Or would it be a case of voluntary manslaughter? You've heard Karen talk about that, the nuances between those two charges and what it would take to reach uh, a guilty verdict on either one. Or uh, will they find Ray Tenzing not guilty on both? And a quit him? Will he walk out of a free man or will the jury be hung? That's clearly the big question tonight. I'm sure that Judge Shanahan, the last thing that she would want to have happen would be a hung jury considering the expense that the state has put into this trial and so forth. But at the end of the day, the jurors are going to have their own opinions and they're going to have their own feelings. And it's uh, really just a wait and see game until we find out what exactly they think. Okay, that's the latest from inside the courthouse. Uh, Mike and Sheree, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Todd, quickly before you go, we saw uh, Sam DeBose's family, his sister, has been uh, clearly uh, um, the, the spokesperson for their family. We've also heard from his mother and a, a few of his children, but she's frustrated. Normally she'll stop, she'll chat with us, but clearly emotional for her. Um, we've not seen Officer Tensing's family. I'm sure they're in the courtroom. Have they talked with you at all? How are they reacting as this goes now on into a third day as well? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, and it's one that, you know, we have reached out in subtle ways. I mean, we understand that it's painful for both families, clearly. And uh, personally, and I, we've talked with colleagues, the Tenzing family has maintained their composure throughout, considering how difficult this is. They're, you know, I definitely know his father's here. I believe his mother's here. I believe they're both his parents, because when Ray Tenzing was testifying on Tuesday, you know, and he was tearing up, there was a woman sitting next to his father, who we know for sure is his dad, uh, and she was crying and wiping away tears. So I, I'm under the impression that's his mom as well. So, and his brothers here, a, a, a young man who looks very much like Ray Tenzing. So, and a number of family. They're always really. Uh, there's a big crowd on Ray Tenzing's side of the courtroom, but they're always very. They seem very respectful of the process. They're listening intently. They're watching. They're trying to understand what's happening. Uh, it seems as though, and Karen and I have talked about this in some cases, some high-profile cases, uh, family members of the defendant will be willing to talk to try to cast their uh, whoever that person is, the defendant, in a, in a positive light. In this case, for whatever reason. And perhaps on the advice of Stu Matthews, they've kept a very low profile. We've reached out. We've indicated if you'd like to talk, we're here. Um, and they certainly know that because it's impossible not to see our presence here in the courthouse. But they've, they've decided not to weigh in publicly at this point. We certainly hope at some point they'll, they'll share their thoughts about this experience, but that would be on down the road. But to your point, Sheree, I know a lot of people are interested and would like to know more about the family, but until they're inclined to talk or inclined to share their story, if that ever does happen, then you know we're certainly respectful of that too as journalists. And you reach out, you ask, and then you move on from there. But um, but they've been, you know, both sides by and large have really maintained their composure considering what's on the line here. Cherie? Thanks so much, Todd. And I know even at one point, Sam DeBose's family during testimony when they were playing videos and such said, we're going to step out because we don't want to affect this trial and we know this is going to be emotional, so we're not going to watch this part. Todd Dykes will be checking back in. Thanks so much. He's got